In the summer of 1986, Mark Gerardo first laid eyes upon Janair Cox, the woman who would eventually become his wife. They were both teenagers at the time and Janair worked at a Taco Bell in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Mark said that he was immediately smitten from the moment that they met and commented how her beautiful eyes and big smile had taken away his breath. Due to Mark's crippling shyness around Janair, their romance didn't begin until four years later when he ran into her again and found out that she was working in a nearby mall. He began to visit her regularly and one day it would be Janair that had pressed him to make the first move, asking when he was going to take her out. It was this directness that drew Mark to Janair. She was confident and unafraid to speak her mind, the exact opposite to Mark and everything that he wished he could be, he seen in Janair. The two married a few years later, on October the 23rd, 1993. He was 25 and she was 23, and together the two would cement a bond that began in adolescence and carried them through into adulthood. The two thought that they had found the person that they would remain with forever. I'm the bride, I'm Janair. We were happy, okay, and I couldn't imagine not being with her the rest of my life. The pair had maintained a strong marriage, but when the 2008 financial crisis struck, Mark would later be quoted to say, It changed everything for us. Money had frequently been a concern and a source of stress for the couple, and the two would often find that this was the main source of most of their arguments. In November of 2011, the two moved to Greenville, South Carolina, where they had both found new jobs in marketing. With the new environment, Mark said that they experienced somewhat of a renaissance for their marriage, frequently exploring the state's scenic mountains and beaches, which had brought them closer than ever before. All was well for the next few years, but in 2017, their renewed life in South Carolina came to a standstill. Janair had been let go from her job and was having difficulty finding a new one. She lost confidence in herself and was becoming a mere shadow of the woman she had once been. It was around this time that the couple decided once again that it was time to search for new opportunities and a new start somewhere else. Eventually deciding that Delaware would be their new home, Mark began to search for a new job. He saw that the University of Delaware was hiring a creative director in its marketing department. If successful, he would be the supervisor. Mark sent over an email applying for the role and received an instant message back from a lady, 15 years his junior, who would be his new boss, offering him an interview. This would be Mark Gerardo's first encounter with Meredith Chapman. Despite her young age, 33-year-old Meredith was highly successful and was working as a senior director for marketing at the university. I start with my career and it was just something that I didn't know that I could do and Nancy was the type of professor that just A put faith in me and B challenged me to figure out what do you want to do, how do you find a creative solution um, and that really set me on my career trajectory. Um, Meredith, a native of Pennsylvania, had graduated from the University of Delaware with a bachelor's degree in communication and a master's degree in education. She was also married to a man called Luke a former Newark City Councilman. The pair had married in 2009 and lived in Fairfield Crest, Delaware, with their dog Inda. Upon attending his interview, Mark found that he was instantly uncaptivated by Meredith, not only by her beauty, but her pure brilliance. He stated, When I sat across the desk from her, within five minutes I didn't say out loud, but I said, I've got to work for this person. She was so articulate and so accomplished that at her age to be in the position she was in, I was dumbfounded. It seems that Meredith was just as impressed with Mark because she immediately offered him the job to which he gratefully accepted, and in November of 2017, Mark moved to Wilmington, Delaware, whilst his wife remained at their former address in South Carolina for a month and a half as she arranged for their home to be rented out. Mark was excited not only to be moving north, but also to see growth in his career. He didn't anticipate that this would also be the beginning of the end of his marriage. Mark had spent his first 45 days living alone in Delaware. During that time, he said he got to know Meredith well. It seemed that the two had had a lot in common 
and one day she'd asked him out for a drink. Recalling the events of that night, Mark said that it was easy to talk to her, and before they had gone home, he told her about losing his parents and his brother. He had also spoken about his marriage to Janair. Mark didn't know what was happening, stating that he knew it felt amazing to be around Meredith, but he was becoming confused with his feelings. That was until the pair once again went out, this time on a dinner date. Mark said that the issues within his marriage had also come into focus when he was with Meredith. It was at this time that Mark began to compare Meredith to that of his wife, stating of how Meredith began to tell him that he was good at what he does and how wonderful a man he was, something he had never heard from his wife's lips. Mark was becoming smitten, saying, that just made an impression on me, here's this woman who I think is amazing, saying that she thinks I'm a wonderful man. I didn't know what to do with the feelings I was feeling. It were new, unexpected. At the same time, they were, it was addictive as well. And we'd gotten into a pattern that was over and over again, the same thing. And when I got to see that life can be different, that there's something else, I, I questioned everything. It would be just four weeks after meeting that the pair had kissed for the first time. Mark said that whilst the energy was certainly there, he immediately felt awful for betraying his wife, and claims to have told Meredith that whatever was about to happen could not, because he cared for his wife. However, he soon realised that he also couldn't give up on the feelings that he was developing for Meredith, who he said had told him she was nine years into an unhappy marriage herself. Mark later backtracked and said that shutting things down between he and Meredith just didn't feel right, and instead, he had to at least find out what it was that drew them together. Before Janair Gerardo even made it to Delaware, her husband and Meredith had now already expressed their love for one another. When Janair had moved north that December, Mark said that she could sense that he was being distant, and it wasn't long before she confronted him about her suspicions that there was another woman. With Mark denying any affair, Janair had already put the pieces together and asked if it was Meredith. Mark had mentioned her name several times while speaking about his new job. Once more, Mark continued to deny any wrongdoings, but Janair would not let this go. Now aware that something was off with Mark, Janair began to keep tabs on her husband. However, it didn't take long for Mark to notice that Janair had mysteriously begun to know things about him and Meredith, and he couldn't understand how she knew them. Now nearing Valentine's Day of 2018, Janair had finally received the confirmation that she'd been looking for. But her husband's admission of an affair had come at the cost of her own. She admitted to her husband that she'd hired a company to gain access to his phone, allowing her to read his texts and see his photos and records of calls that he had exchanged with Meredith. I found more joy, more excitement this fall than I'd ever did before. I want to see you again today. I really want to. It's kind of neat too. Dude, where are you going to be? Thanks. Love you too. Bye. Mark knew that he could not keep up with the lie any longer and admitted the truth to Janair that he had indeed fallen for Meredith. Devastated, but refusing to simply give up her husband, Janair asked Mark to attend marriage counselling. He told her that he would attend, however, on the day of their second session, as Mark put on his jacket, he felt something bulging in the lining of the material. And I reached inside my pocket and I felt what I thought was an um, anti-theft device. I cut open with an exacto blade the edge of the pocket and pulled out this device and there was a blinking light. It was a listening device. It was a listening device. Furious. Mark confronted his wife, who innocently claimed that she just wanted to understand the degree to which Meredith and Mark were in their relationship. From that moment on, the relationship between Mark and Janair Gerardo would fall apart at an accelerated pace. Mark eventually told his wife that he planned on filing for divorce in May, once he had met Delaware's residency requirements and could move out of their shared home. Meanwhile, things were going particularly well for Meredith Chapman who had now been offered a new job as the Assistant Vice President at Villanova University in Pennsylvania. 
She and her husband were also getting divorced so that she could continue to pursue her new relationship with Mark and they could finally be together. As Meredith and Mark's relationship continued to grow, Janaire began to see divorce coach Sheila Brennan who said that she had a lot of resentment and anger about being tossed away and traded in for a younger woman. Everybody says it's over. I, I'm not there yet, I can't accept it. Janaire was concerned about being tossed away. You don't find me appealing, you don't find me attractive, you don't want me anymore, you don't even like me. You are miserable. She lights your fire, she makes you feel young. She had huge fears about being left financially. I realize that this whole situation has caused you not to be able to get a job. I get that, I really do. Heard the pooch, big time. On us, our my future, your future, our future, our finances, everything. You screwed the pooch because you made an immoral, selfish choice. Things for Janaire seemed to go from bad to worse and eventually this had taken a toll on her mental health. At one point, Janaire even threatened her husband that she would jump out of the window. He recommended that she see a psychiatrist and asked her to also seek support from her friends and family. Janaire took this advice and he said that she seemed to become more accepting of the upcoming divorce. One day, Janaire approached her husband with a list of requests for the weeks leading up to him finally moving out. Matt believed that they had gotten through the worst of things, but little did he know that this was far from the truth, and the worst was still yet to come. At this time, however, it seems as though whilst Mark had believed Janaire was coping better due to acceptance of the situation, in reality, she was desperately clinging on to the hope that she could win Mark back again, and among the many items on her list, going out on hikes, having dinner, and generally spending some time together would hopefully do this. Mark agreed to play along with Janaire's requests, stating, it was odd but I'm trying to land this thing so she's in a good place. If this was what she needed, then I was going to do that. Believing that he was helping Janair to gain closure of their relationship, Janair was actually getting her hopes up that this was bringing her and Mark closer together again. Janair also began posting on the neighbourhood app next door, asking for recommendations for an excellent marriage guidance counsellor for a couple on the brink of divorce. She went on writing, we will need someone who is very educated and experienced dealing with couples issues including infidelity, depression, traumatic experiences, child parent dynamics, being accountable for actions etc. On the night of April 23rd 2018, Mark and Janaire Gerardo were supposed to meet for dinner as per Janaire's request to continue to spend time together. But in a series of text messages, Janaire told her husband who was already at the restaurant that she was running late before she sent another one telling him to go home because she wouldn't make it. Minutes later, as Mark got up to leave, he received a picture from Janaire. This picture showed an emptied trash bag with a condom in the middle, followed by another text from Janaire that read, you ruined my life. Mark knew immediately that his wife was sifting through Meredith's trash can outside of her home that she had lived in for merely a week. He said that the next two messages from Janaire had read, I hope you never find happiness, and bye Mark. Fearing for Meredith's safety and afraid of what his wife might do, Mark tried to call Meredith and text her multiple times. All forms of communication, however, went unanswered. He rushed to Meredith's home, expecting to find a confrontation between the two, but when he arrived, he found something worse than he could ever have imagined. Laying face down on her kitchen floor, with a pool of blood forming around her head, Meredith lay lifeless. Nearby, he found his wife's body also laying on the floor. Less than two hours before her death, Meredith had gushed on her Instagram account about her new position at Villanova, writing that she couldn't be more excited. Later that evening, Meredith arrived at her new home on Lowry Lane in Radnor Township, parked her Audi in the driveway opened the door and walked straight inside, completely oblivious to the fact that Janaire had broken in and was lying in wait. Tim Mulver, one of Meredith's neighbours, was there when Mark arrived at the home. 
he had already heard the commotion and had gone outside to see what had happened. Mark Gerardo had told Mulvey to call 911. Mark, who Police Chief Christopher Flanagan said seemed to be hyperventilating, was placed in the back of an ambulance before he was brought to the police station as a suspect in the crime. But after questioning and finding the gun used in the two deaths underneath Janair's body, the police determined that she had broken into Meredith's home before murdering her and then turning the gun on herself. One day after the murder-suicide, police received a tip from a person who said they had seen a woman in a trench coat, hat, sunglasses and a possible wig scoping out the house with binoculars. Police also collected a set of keys from the crime scene, which they determined belonged to the Cadillac that Janair Gerardo had rented. Mark Gerardo said that he continued to dig in the aftermath of the murder-suicide. He pored over his wife's bank statements, phone records and her computer backup and found that she had been living a double life. After her husband admitted to the affair just after Valentine's Day, Janair had opened up a secret bank account and credit cards. She used the credit cards to purchase the audio surveillance equipment, as well as a lock picking kit, computer hacking software and DNA testing kits for his clothes. She had even bought sophisticated GPS tracking systems and attached these to both Mark and Meredith's cars. Mark went on to state, I think there were over 400 images of private conversations that Meredith and I had via text and via Snapchat, and she would actually, in the middle of the night, get access to my phone. Mark Dorado said, My best guess as to how she gained access. I was sleeping on the couch and she'd put my form on the phone reader. Janair Gerardo bought the gun that she would use in the murder-suicide on March the 20th, 2018, five weeks before she committed the crime. Mark said that the credit card statements had shown that she had practiced shooting the gun three times at a firing range. He said that the audio recording device that he found in his jacket wasn't the only one that his wife had used. He said she had planted multiple devices in his clothes and that he had found files containing hundreds of hours of audio that his wife had recorded, even transcribing the audio into notebooks. He said she took all of my jackets and had a multitude of devices that she was cycling in and out. Every day she would take it back out and then sew it back in, download it and back and forth. She had done this for weeks. It came to light on the night that Janair had killed Meredith and herself, she emailed a letter to family members explaining her motive to a very chilling degree. She had started the letter weeks before and dated her entries, also writing of how this was payback and quoting, that's as simple as it gets. In a televised TV interview with presenter Dr Oz, Mark revealed how his wife had left a 15 page letter stating how she would have killed him too had he walked in on the crime. In the years since the events, Mark Gerardo has said that he wishes he had handled the breakup with his wife differently. I broke her heart and more than anything out of all of this, my regret comes back to breaking her heart and making her feel as though she had no other choice. I wish I wouldn't have hurt her because I loved her, I still love her, I wish I could take it back. But Mark is also trying to move forward. He said that he has driven past Meredith's home several times and that doing so has helped him come to terms with what has happened so that he can let go. Mark Gerardo has since published a book about the incident. He said that his hopes for people reading it will be to learn from his mistakes. However, many have questioned Mark's sincerity and have accused him of trying to profit from a tragedy that he ultimately caused. Mark has rejected these claims and said that any royalties from the book will be donated to a charitable organisation that supports suicide prevention. It's so painful for me to see you living your life happy. She's living my life.